Hey everybody, welcome back to the Streaming CT YouTube channel. Today we are talking about a 1U rack mountable Mac mini server that allows for Thunderbolt 3 connectivity and two PCIe cards. And this particular enclosure is by Sonnet Technologies. This is the Sonnet X Mac mini 1U enclosure. So I'm gonna open this thing up in just a second, but why do I have this is the question. This is for an application called Zoom ISO, Zoom ISO. What that allows me to do, we work in live broadcast and streaming. What that allows me to do is take isolated feeds from a Zoom call. So contributors like presenters that are on a Zoom call, I can take an isolated feed from them and put it into my video switcher. And I can do pretty much an unlimited amount depending on computer processing power. But in this particular box, I can do eight outputs. Now Zoom ISO only runs on a Mac, an Apple computer. So that's why I'm using a Mac mini. In this case, it could run on any Apple computer. So let me show you the outside of this. I'll show you the ports it has, and then we'll open it up and show you what's inside. So here's the front of the device. As you can see, X Mac mini server. It has a USB-A port on the front. This front panel comes on. In fact, this comes fully put together and ready for you to use. So it uses one U of rack space and it's already set up to be able to install right into a rack. Comes with the little handle so you can pull it out. There are no rails on this, but there are some screw holes. So I think you probably could put rails on this if you were pulling it in and out of a rack quite a bit, but that's the front. Um, there's also vents and inside you'll see some fans, but you can't really see them. It's very low profile. Um, they did a nice job, well machined. So let's look at the back. Okay, so from left to right, as if you were behind your rack, we first have an IEC power cable. This does have a built-in power supply, so you won't need to use the Mac mini cable. I'll show you inside what that looks like. There's a fan for that power supply here. There is an RJ45 ethernet jack. That can support 10 gig or one gig ethernet. It just connects into the Mac mini, so but the, the port and the cord is rated for 10 gig. You have an HDMI output. That's gonna pass through directly to the Mac mini as well another USB-A, and then this is a pass-through for the Thunderbolt 3 cable that comes with it with a locking Thunderbolt 3 connector here. So you can take this off and you'll see it's just a regular Thunderbolt 3 cable. This cable is what actually connects the PCIe cards to the Mac Mini. So you don't want this falling out, so that's pretty cool that they give you that, it screws in. So that plugs into the Thunderbolt 3 port, the first Thunderbolt 3 port on the card and then there's another Thunderbolt 3 port that you could daisy chain, you could run monitors, you could run pretty much whatever you want. And then you see all these SDI connections and they're actually BNC connectors, but we use SDI in video as well as HDMI. These are the Decklink Duo cards by a company called Blackmagic Design. So if you're looking for Decklink Duo, we'll see the inside in a minute. So there's 10 connections, but you actually only get eight outputs. One of these on each card is for reference. That's for another video, but you get 10, in our case, outputs. They can be used as inputs as well. So if you're taking cameras in and you were using vMix or some other program to actually mix a show, you can use them as inputs or outputs. You can see a lot of ventilation holes and then these thumb screws on either side are to take this top panel off, which we are about to do so we can see inside. So let's do that now. Um, one thing to note is while the machining is good, there are some very sharp edges on this. Um, I have yet to be cut, but I think I probably could be pretty easily. So just be careful if you do pick one of these up. So I've unscrewed both thumb screws. A nice thing is they don't fall off. They're actually on it even when you unscrew it. And they do have a Phillips, looks like Phillips number two. So if they were tightened down by um, the Hulk, you could put a screwdriver on to, to open it up. So if I lift up on this, tips up, and then I can pull out this way. And there's the top cover. So you can see there is a little bit of foam that will push down on the Mac Mini. And then there's a piece of, it looks like, um, like rubber tape, so that when you're putting this back on, it doesn't actually scratch the top of the Mac Mini. So I'm gonna put this off to the side for now, and then we can get into the innards of this Sonnet X Mac Mini case. All right, so now we are inside the server. 
you can see the Mac Mini here. Everything's plugged in. And the Mac Mini just slides in and it fits really snugly. There's plastic stand-ups on either side and it just fits right in. And then with the cover, it actually will hold it down. So I was moving it around quite a bit, bringing it over here, taking it out of the rack and it was not moving at all. I mean, it, it's solidly in there, surprisingly. So there's no, you don't have to like damage your Mac Mini to install this. So if we start over here, I mentioned the built-in power supply. So there's a fan and then it's an IEC regular uh, power connector. This is riveted to the case. But then the Mac Mini, you can see you just plug in. It's already got the, the cord for the Mac Mini. So you don't need to use the Mac Mini cord anymore. So that plugs in there. And then here's the RJ45, the ethernet cord that's passing through from the back. We'll just unplug these as we go. Here's the Thunderbolt 3. You can plug these into any of the Thunderbolt ports in the back of the Mac Mini. So that's a Thunderbolt 3 cable that does come with it. It actually, it runs through this pass-through port in the back. I don't love that. I wish Sonnet had a solution that didn't make this Thunderbolt 3 cord have to go back out the back of the chassis and then plug into the card. I wish there was maybe some sort of jumper or something they could do, but maybe the next version. The Mac Minis have a single HDMI port, so the HDMI passes through to the back of the case. And then there are two USB-A ports on this Mac Mini. So we have a USB-A that passes through to the back, and this one's not plugged in, but it can be right here, and this passes through to the front port. So it's really nice. Once you put this in, you don't have to unplug the Mac Mini. Um, you don't have to take it out. You can just leave it in there and use its ports. When I first opened up this case, I didn't realize until I read the directions that you could put two PCIe cards here because I saw the Thunderbolt card here and obviously I see the PCIe slot here, but I didn't see any other slots. So there's actually a PCIe slot underneath the Thunderbolt card here. And that's where I have one of the Decklink duos from Blackmagic Design. And the other Decklink duo is right here. Now, these are fairly small cards. I mean, they're maybe four inches in depth, um, but you could run a full length card here and then a half length card here. That's what it's rated for. Blackmagic Design does make the Deck Link Quad, which has eight inputs or outputs. They're the mini SDIs, and then it also has reference. So you could use that here. Instead of having two cards, I could have a single card here and maybe I have a Decklink Duo there. Some cards do require more than just the power that the PCIe slot provides. So they do have a port here and they give you the cable to plug in if you were plugging in a card that did require that. Now this could be used for more than just Zoom ISO. Let's say you're using ProPresenter or some other sort of video software like vMix. Um, whatever you choose, you could use these Decklink cards and this Mac Mini to input or output video. So this would be very handy in a rack that maybe you have an ATEM Constellation 2ME or you have some other video gear and you want to be able to have a versatile piece of technology, a rack mounted computer. And I mentioned in the beginning that Zoom ISO can support quite a few outputs. I don't know what the max limit is. It's, it's like 100. That would be determinate though on the computer. Because remember, the computer is doing the work here to make those outputs happen. So I have eight outputs here. This is a Mac Mini M2 Pro. This is probably the max this, this Mac Mini could handle. Um, maybe it could do more. I wouldn't be comfortable. I probably would want more RAM. This just has 16 gigs of RAM, which was the stock when we bought this computer. This was actually repurposed. So you, if you were gonna do 16, 24 outputs of Zoom ISO, you probably would wanna step up to whatever the fastest processor you could get. We are gonna do a deep dive on Zoom ISO because it's a really cool program. There's version two that's out right now. Version one had some things I wasn't thrilled about, so we never really moved over to it, but version two is rock solid. So if you want a deep dive on Zoom ISO, Zoom ISO, subscribe to the channel, 
and that will be coming out soon. We will also have some videos on the other solutions, like for example, Epifan Connect, which also connects to the Zoom cloud and uses the raw data APIs, pulls that video and audio, and then sends SRT feeds to decoders. So we've done a lot of testing with that. So let's get back to this. There's a few more things I wanna cover before we close out. You can send audio out any SDI port along with video. SDI supports 16 channels of audio, and Zoom ISO can utilize those 16 channels of audio. So if you're going into a video mixer that can mix audio as well, then you can utilize that. So what we do is one of two things. Either we'll use just the external headphone port on the Mac Mini, send that to the audio person who is sending out to the stream and also sending out to, let's say, the auditorium where the crowd is, so to the front of house speakers will hear it, or we'll use a USB audio device and take the left and right TRS, like the quarter inch jacks, and go to an XLR. It depends what we're doing but you could uh, mount something in here, like a, a small audio interface. So, but that's the nice thing about Zoom ISO is it really lets you be versatile. If you could just send the video out the SDI, you could send the video and the audio SD, out the SDI. Um, then you could use an audio interface and send that out, uh, balanced, or you can just use the plain old headphone jack that comes on the Mac minis, which is awesome that headphone jacks are still on something these days. Okay, return feed. So this is a common question is, okay, I want to send the program feed of what I'm mixing back into the Zoom call so that the contributors, whoever's going to be presenting, can actually see and hear what's going on. So they know, okay, you know, Sally, you're on. They need to be able to know that they're on now on stage, the virtual stage. So there's a few different ways you could do it. You could do it with like an ATEM Mini uh, Pro or ATEM, really any of the ATEM Mini lines um, or any of the new Constellation lines. You could do it with a web presenter. We have some of the older web presenters along with the newer ones, but the older web presenters were actually pretty cool because you could send an XLR, balanced XLR, you know, the three pin XLR audio into it. And then you could also send SDI video into it. It would mix the two together and then send over a USB into the computer and look like a webcam. So if you have something connected that looks like a webcam and something connected that looks like audio, you can select those two and that's how you can pipe your program feed or your return feedback into Zoom. I just wanted to show you this Sonnet X Mac Mini enclosure. Um, you can call it a server, they call it a server. Um, it's really an enclosure or a chassis to me until you put some sort of compute power in here, like the Mac Mini, and then it becomes a server. At the time of filming this, this is $9.99, so a thousand US dollars, so it's not cheap for a chassis, but it's custom. One last thing before you leave. So when you push the power button on the front of this chassis, it's actually moving a little bar that's moving a little piece of plastic that's pushing the power button on the back of the Mac Mini, and it works perfectly. I've tested it and tried it. I thought that was the most genius thing. It's such a simple thing. It's just, you don't wanna to have to take the top of this thing off just to turn on and off the Mac Mini. So how would you? Sonnet thought of it. So you are paying a premium for this, but you have things like that. You have built-in fans for cooling. Um, you have the built-in power supply. So it isn't just an empty enclosure that you're paying for. If you are interested in purchasing this or the Black magic cards. I will leave affiliate links down below. If you have any questions on this or you have suggestions, also leave those in the comments below. How do you use Zoom ISO? Do you use Zoom ISO? Are you interested in it? We, we, we want to hear. We answer every comment. So please leave those down below. Subscribe to the channel. Give the video a like and stay tuned for some more really interesting content on live streaming and live broadcasts.